Thanks for being part of this conference call. Slide two. Before I turn over the meeting to John Bergeron, our CFO, I would like to make several comments. During Q2 of this year, shareholders' equity and working capital ratio increased. We paid down over 390000 of debt during this quarter. In addition, during Q2 of this year, we had 260000 in non-cash charges. To present the financial numbers to our investors, I turn the meeting over to John Bergeron, our CFO. John? Thank you, Dr. Donovan. Uh, before we start, I need to read the forward-looking statement. This presentation includes forward-looking statements as determined by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. All statements, other than statements of historical facts, included in this presentation that address activities, events, or developments that the company believes or anticipates will or may occur in the future are forward-looking statements. Such forward-looking statements involve known and unknown risks, uncertainty, and other factors which may cause the actual results, performance, or achievements of the company to be materially different from any future results, performance, or achievements expressed or implied by such forward-looking statements. Such factors include general economic and business conditions, the ability to acquire and develop specific projects, the ability to fund operations, health care services, demands, changes in health care practices, government regulation, and other factors which the company has little or no control. The company does not intend and is not obligated to update publicly any forward-looking statements. The contents of this presentation should be considered in conjunction with the warnings and the cautionary statements contained in the company's recent filings with the SEC. <clears throat> now, if you'll please look at page four, slide four. Looking at page four, you see the graphs on our gross revenue, net revenue, EBITDA, and net income on the slide. Excluding non-cash charges, SPIN would have had a profit of $160,000 for the quarter. With the inclusion of these non-cash charges, the company incurred a loss of $101,000 for the quarter. For the three months period ending June 30, 2013, we reported re ne <coughs> excuse me, revenue net of an allowance of discounts or net revenue of $867,000. This compares the net revenue of $919,000 for Q2 2012. The decrease in net revenue was partially due to the decision not to fund as many cases since the private placement memorandums totaling not $350,000 were to be paid on June 30, 2013, and they were paid. The company incurred a quarterly net loss of $101,000 or one cent for basic share, which includes non-cash charges of $261,000, comprised primarily of executive and directors or managerial stock options, accretion of debt, and provision for bad debt. This compares to a net loss of $386,000 or two cents per diluted shares for the second quarter of 2012. That also included a non-cash charge of $327,000 related to the settlement of a lawsuit. General and administrative expenses during the second quarter of 2013 were $477,000, which was a 15% reduction in the GNA expenditures over the previous quarter of 2012. For the six-month period ending June 30, 2013, we recorded net revenue of $1.9 million and a net loss of $56,000, which included non-operating charges of $521,000, again related to the executive and director's managerial stock options accretion of debt provision for bad debt. This compares to $2.2 million in the net revenue and the net profits of $95,000, or one cent per diluted share for the same period of 2012. You can see the footnotes at the bottom page four that emphasize our debt repayment, positive EBITDA and the 2000, for the 2013 year, and the positive income when excluding non-cash charges. Looking at page five, you will see our year-end balance, our balance sheets as of June 30th, 2013 and 2012. 
As of, two, as of June 30, 2013, we had aggregate accounts receivable of $7.1 million. Total outstanding shares on this date were $18.4 million, with fully diluted shares totaling $18,415,882. I want you to notice the current ratio improvement of 2.7 to 1 to 4.4 4 to 1 from 2002 to 2013, excuse me, 2012 to 2013. The shareholder sexually, <clears throat> the shareholder's equity section has also increased over the last year. Shortly before the end of the second quarter, the company paid back $350,000 of private placement memorandums while renewing $100,000 in notes for two additional years. The warrant conversion in these notes allows the the note holder to purchase up to 100,000 shares of Spine Pain Management's common stock at 45 cents per share. Additionally, we paid back $40,000 in related party debt, bringing our total debt repayment of $390,000 for the quarter. You can also explore this further in our 10Q. The highlights I want to bring out is that our collections are increasing while our debt is decreasing. Our collections are trending up. In 2013, we had positive income when deducting the non-cash charges. And fourth, the shareholders' equities increased. Uh, everybody always asks me during these events, how are we going to do in the future? Well, based on what I've seen in the first six weeks of this quarter, coupled with the fact of the changes that we've made better vetting, I believe the second half will definitely be will surpass the first half, and it will surpass uh, the third quarter of 2012. Uh, now, to further discuss our business opportunities, I will now turn the call back over to Dr. Donovan, founder and CEO of Spine Pain Management. Uh, thank you, John, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure and honor to be the CEO of this very unique company. Spine Pain Management is a medical services and technology company that provides transparency of the medical services provided by our affiliate doctors. My priority as CEO is the proper allocation of capital and maximizing shareholder return. Spine Pain will pursue every opportunity to create value for our shareholders. Slide 7. During 2013, I have listed some of the key developments to date. We will discuss the new San Antonio affiliate in more detail, but essentially we entered a competitive market with affiliated doctors who did not perform procedures on personal injury cases. By combining CLE marketing programs and utilizing the QVH halo, we have developed a significant opportunity in San Antonio. In addition, we have reduced our long-term debt by over $390,000 and have initiated joint venture discussions with potential partners for new revenue centers. Of particular interest, we paid off the very last check for a lawsuit from many years ago that was part of a previous company. In July, we had two major highlights of settling our 1,000th case, and July happened to be the highest monthly collection ever. Next slide. Recently, in fact, I was invited to the Houston Trial Lawyers Association to present the HALO technology. Slide 9. I would like to specifically take the time this afternoon to specifically discuss where we stand in leveraging our business into a long-term growth story. But for those of you who are new to our company, I wanted to take a moment to summarize our core business. Slide 9 is a snapshot of the company. 
our share equity, uh, correction, our shareholder equity is approximately 32 cents per share, and our positive working capital ratio is 4.4 to 1. Our out outstanding share is 18.4 million, and we have managed over 5,600 procedures. Next slide. Slide 10. As of Q2 2013, we have performed over 5,600 procedures and treated over 3,200 cases. Only 1.6% of cases settled with no collections. Okay. On slide 11, our collections have increased to $6.2 million on 973 cases. As I mentioned previously, we've just recently settled our case number 1,000. So this leaves us with over 2,200 cases yet to settle. Next slide. I would like now to turn over the meeting to Dr. Greta Kay to discuss the business model and the quad video halo. Eric? Thanks, Dr. Donovan, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. For those of you that are not familiar with SPIN's business model, SPIN funds diagnostic non-invasive testing and, um, and uh, final epidural steroid injections and diagnostic to set nerve blocks on patients that are involved in uh, liability accidents, specifically uh, motor vehicle accidents, uh, commercial cases, and uh, slip and fall accidents. SPIN funds the affiliated attending physician's practice once the, once the uh, treatments have been completed at an average of 18 to 20 percent. They take ownership of that billing and collections process and the patient signs an assignment of benefits, and their legal counsel signs a letter of protection with spine pain management. Since 2009, on average, SPIN received approximately 48% of its billing once the case is settled. In line with its experience, for SEC reporting purposes, SPIN reports approximately 48% of its billing as revenue. It closely monitors this rate throughout the year and adjusted accordingly on an annual basis. From this point forward, SPIN is, a, SPIN is exposed to risk of a rare but possible zero payment on a settled case. Approximately 1.6 of total cases have resulted in no payment. On average, settlement occurs within 12 to 18 months. And obviously, uh, SPIN owns no brick and mortar as it has no medical liability. Next slide, please. This is our quad video halo technology. Uh, this, uh, as you look at the screen, you see uh, four different uh, windows there. Uh, and basically what this, what this technology does is it allows cameras to hover just above the sterile field and it creates a video of what's going on outside the body and inside the body. So you see those the, the top left, the top right, and the, and the bottom left windows are all outside the body, different points of view. And then on the bottom right, you see the fluoroscopic view, which is the actual x-ray that's being taken during the procedure as the doctor tries to uh, diagnose the, the patient's uh, pain generator. This becomes part of the medical record, and this is um, uh, delivered uh, uh, via uh, DVD uh, for documentation purposes. Next slide, please. I'd like to turn this over to uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Tim Donovan, uh, uh, Dr. Donovan, for, uh, for a, a future shareholder value. Obviously, we're all shareholders, and what does the future look like? Well, let's talk first about the QVH technology. We're using it right now as me as an affiliated doctor for identifying what's the cause of the patient's pain in the spine. 
well, there's certain cases, types of cases, that do not need injections. However, they need documentation of motion, instability, and so forth. We're working with a group right now to take our tech, existing technology and to adapt it for additional uh, revenue centers. In addition, uh, as you know, we filed for a patent on the QVH in 2011, expanded the patent in 2012, and we anticipate expanding it even further in the very uh, uh, near future. What we do know is we're attracting a lot of attention where even last week I was asked to come and give a talk on the technology. So it's good for all parties because it provides transparency. The, the, the technology has value and the AMA is saying that we as doctors, we have to be more open and transparent about what we do. We, as I just mentioned, we want to expand this technology for further diversification of revenue. Uh, we anticipate taking this technology and our systems, the management systems, into new states. And Tim will discuss this based on uh, some uh, uh, new things that have developed in uh, San Antonio. Obviously, we have to collect the receivables. What we do know, on the first thousand cases, we have collected $6.2 million. We still have 2,200 cases uh, existing right now that need to be settled. We have to continue implementation of a strategy that results in the best collections. We have to increase the month. And we have to choose the best cases by implementing risk and manage assessment methods. Next slide. Next slide. Here are our goals for the rest of uh, 2013. We want to continue to increase the market share in San Antonio. Basically, we want to clone San Antonio uh, both in other cities, in Texas and other cities, in, in other states, sorry. Tim will speak more about the San Antonio uh, facility. We want to pursue newer and recurrent revenue overlays of existing business. We have contacts with our affiliated doctors and they're receiving patients sent to the affiliated doctors from many doctors. Well, those doctors need other types of services. Uh, we're exploring this right now. Uh, we're using the QVH to really find the best of the docs to be affiliated with us, and it's, it's paying off with better type of cases, uh, better technology, better procedures. And obviously we're going to diversify our portfolio away from Florida because of all the upheaval down uh, with the PIP law. And lastly, uh, we're still looking for the right person uh, to come in and take the lead as the CEO. Uh, with certain requirements, and we have been uh, discussing with various people. So to me, these are the management goals that we want to focus on. I now want to turn over uh, the uh, conversation and uh, PowerPoint uh, to Tim Donovan, Senior VP Operations and Administration. Tim? I thank you very much and good afternoon. On page 16, slide 16, we're going to review uh, some of the success with our San Antonio pilot program. 
Again, for those of you that are not familiar, San Antonio is an affiliate that we opened in late February of this year. The unique uh, characteristics uh, of this affiliate is what we believe makes it a pilot for future growth. It was the first affiliate uh, that was entered into that had no prior ties to spin, SPIN's uh, active management. Uh, it was the first uh, center that we had started working with as an affiliate that prior to working with SPIN had never uh, worked in the personal injury arena. Therefore, we were able to bring an element of business that was additive to an affiliate. And as, as many of us know, with healthcare right now and the changes that are, that are coming soon, there's a lot of medical providers out across the United States who are looking for ways to grow their business in, in new segments of the market. So again, the San Antonio affiliate had no existing PI revenue prior to working with SPIN. It was the first standalone affiliate to launch with the Quad Video Halo system from inception. Why is that important? Because I know many shareholders have been following uh, the launch of the Halo, the continued development of, of version 2.1, and they want to know what effect the Halo has on our business and what effect it's going to have on our business moving forward. Again, San Antonio is a great pilot affiliate because it had no relationships in place in the San Antonio market. The reason why the attorneys have been working with our affiliate there is specifically because the Quad Video Halo is exclusively available at this affiliate. Therefore, we know now without a doubt the Quad Video Halo is what allows spine pain management to enter into a new marketplace with an affiliate and to determine the long-term viability of that business strategy. It's been working. It's very clearly been working. I think in our first quarter conference call we, we discussed the fact that the affiliate was growing. I can, I can now confirm uh, Q2 of 2013 they were able to quadruple uh, their revenue over the first quarter. And again, I can assure you that just between July 2013 and the previous month, we were again able to grow that revenue by over 94.7%. So we, we have not hit a plateau in the growth that we can experience in that market. Uh, in fact, our affiliate in that city is now interested in bringing us into two additional states, and conversations have started on that, and I believe that we have indicated that we will be in new states prior to the end of fiscal year 2013. What does this really mean for the shareholders that are on the phone? I think it's a continued indication that the model is working. I can tell you administratively that we've just recently reached our all-time collection high at a time of the year where settlements are usually coming in and they're very average in the numbers not the worst month of the year, but it's never been close to being the best. I really think that a lot of the procedures that we've put in place in Florida and Texas have allowed us to really drill down and get these cases settled. It's in the best interest of all parties to get these cases settled, and I think that spine pain management, again, with the quad video halo technology, has been able to facilitate settlement of even older cases that we had uh, logged into our system. Uh, that is one of the unique attributes of the Quad Video Halo. It ties in with the transparency that I know we've discussed in previous calls, that the AMA, that JAMA has been uh, publishing articles about in the Los Angeles Times, et cetera. This transparency is what's needed for this marketplace. And I believe that the Quad Video Halo and the DVDs that document the procedures that spine pain management pre-funds are helping to get settlements on older cases. Uh, July 2013 collections on slide 17 uh, were reviewing again uh, that collections seem to be getting much stronger. Uh, I, would, I would indicate from my point of view, operationally and administratively, 
the third quarter is off to a great start. Uh, those collections in July, uh, our, our collections were a bit softer in the second quarter. Um, I don't believe that it, there's any reason for that, uh, especially uh, toward the end of the quarter other than timing. There were some settlements that uh, didn't close before the holidays in July 4th, uh, and it was, a, and it was a softer in April, I believe, due to uh, the tax month. It was across the board with everyone that I talked with, but overall we're headed uh, toward a really great rest of the year when it comes with collections. Of note, December is normally our strongest time for collections before the end of the year. July was almost 10 percent up over De December 2002, which to me is fantastic. Um, and again, one thing that I think is important, older cases, specifically higher policy limit cases that we've discussed in the past, uh, are starting to settle. And they're, and they're settling um, uh, at a very good rate for the company. Uh, and again, I believe that when you look at the number of cases that we have outstanding, which is over 2,200 cases yet to settle, if you look at the average settlement per case, which was discussed earlier of $6,400, if you look at the fact that the industry as a whole is now requesting transparency and that we're the only company currently being able to offer transparency in this type of procedures. Uh, I think that we're really headed in, in a great direction. I can tell you that we all live now uh, less than halfway through the third quarter, and where we are at right now, things look particularly strong. What we want to do now is go to a um, question and answer. Uh, so I'll turn this over back to the moderator. If he has any questions, uh, we'll repeat the question, and then we'll choose one of the staff to uh, management uh, to answer it. All righty. Uh, let's start with a question from uh, Austin Graff. How will Obamacare impact SPIN's business model? Will more insured Americans help or hurt the company's revenue? We've heard many, uh, uh, that's the end of that question. Well, let me, I'll take that. Uh, this is Bill. The question was, how will, if at all, will Balmacare affect our market? It actually doesn't affect it at all uh, in a negative way. In a positive way, it's going to be much easier for spine pain to find quality affiliate doctors because these affiliate doctors are going to be looking for new revenue centers because Obamacare is going to affect doctors' incomes. There's no question on that. So it'll make us much easier because a lot of the doctors uh, in orthopedics, neurosurgery, PM&R, most of them have never treated uh, patients uh, that have work injuries or auto accidents where they're personal injury type accidents. So Obamacare is actually going to help us. Okay, next question. Also, also from Austin Graff. We've heard many times here there are no lawsuits left outstanding. What was the lawsuit you settled all about? Oh, oh, yeah, uh, good question. Uh, we sent the last payment. This was a suit that originated 10 years ago in a pre-existing company. Uh, it was filed, I think, in 1985 or something, maybe 95. It, it was incredible. And then it sat on somebody's desk for seven years, there was a judgment. No one knew about it. Well, it's gone, thank God. So it had nothing to do with spine pain management, but it was a predecessor company. And it's <coughs> way back. It, I think it was in the 1990s. 
how are you going to find and identify those future affiliate doctors, the best of the best from Harris Goldman? Tim, why don't you take that? Yeah, um, I'd like to address this. Again, uh, just like in, in, in many things in life and in business, word of mouth is uh, the best form of marketing. Uh, as I indicated, our affiliate in San Antonio is very pleased with the growth that we've able, been able to provide them through Quad Video Halo, through the implementation of the continuing legal education seminars that we've launched uh, in Florida and Texas. It's driving traffic there, and therefore uh, they have friends that they went to medical school with years ago. They have people that they're doing consulting with. Everyone within the community, as Dr. Donovan just indicated, is looking for ways to grow their revenue, especially in the face of the implementation of Obamacare. Uh, therefore, when someone's really pleased with what you've been doing and the results speak for themselves, they have friends who say, how do I get involved with that? And obviously, we carefully vet the physicians uh, that we're going to be getting in business with, and also the states and what the business climate is like within the injury, personal injury segment of the marketplace. Not every state offers us the same opportunities. So we've been able to use the due diligence that we've done about the states that we're interested in and the referrals that we're getting from people who are already pleased and working with us. And again, target best of the best. The doctors who are seeking out quad video halo technology, you cannot underestimate the fact that doctors who uh, would not be best of the best, the last thing that they'd want to do is document all of their procedures. So it goes hand in hand, transparency, high quality, best of the best, and success breeds new opportunity and new markets. I'd like to add one more thing to this. Uh, we're in the pr process of evaluating various joint ventures. I have four NDAs right now. Uh, for potential partners. Some of these potential partners could expose us to a very large number of potential affiliated doctors. That's all I can really say at this point. Okay, here's a long question from Austin Graff. <clears throat> Why are you not selling more halos? Do you need to hire experienced salesmen? You've talked about the halo for 18 months. You've sold one. Yes, it will help with collections, but you had said it was another revenue driver. Either the product isn't any good or you have a horrible sales staff. You have a terrible sales staff. I'll take that. Uh, this is Bill. I just mentioned about uh, various joint venture discussions. Uh, I believe by the end of Q3, uh, I will have some positive uh, answers to that question. That's all I can say at this point. I'd like to I'd like to jump in again. In past phone calls, I think it has been discussed that we believe that the halo can be leveraged as standalone sales. However, the first and foremost goal for the halo technology is for spine pain management to continue to attract affiliates and to fill those affiliates with a lot of great cases. Uh, it has not been uh, our number one priority to sell standalone units in areas that we are not currently pre-funding the business. And in regards to the comment, I believe going back to February when we announced that we were uh, uh, exploring recurring revenue streams, there are recurring revenue streams that come from the halo via our existing affiliate business, it doesn't simply come from selling standalone units that you don't control how and where it's being used. Uh, I think Dr. Grodeke, uh, as the inventor of the Quad Video Halo, who's worked carefully on its development through stages one, two, and now 2.1, can, uh, can give you a little bit more information about what we expect and when as far as the pursuit of individual unit sales. 
Okay, from John Solis. Uh, San Antonio, have, have they, has, has San Antonio settled any cases yet? I know they've only been around five or six months. Actually, they have. Um, they have settled cases. Not only have, have I settled cases in San Antonio, um, I, I think we've settled, you know, six or seven at this point. We've, we've been paid on half of those as well. So the indication is, again, with no relationships there, uh, with the HALO and the CLE leading the transparency into the marketplace, there are attorneys who believe that their clients can benefit from having procedures done in an environment with the HALO, with the transparency, and obviously it has, leaded, it has led to case resolution at an earlier date. Next question from Mark Robbins. I'm confused by Tim's statement regarding the quicker settlement of older cases helped by the quad system. It must refer to, quote, older cases, but those still monitored by the quad. Yes? Uh, Mark, I, I apologize if I wasn't clear. Uh, on your larger, higher policy limit cases, uh, spine pain management could have started treating a, a patient in 2010 in one of our affiliate centers. And that patient, because maybe they're going to trial or it's a much larger, more complicated case, may be having additional medical treatment over a one to two year period. So it's very possible that we have people who originally came to our affiliate centers, had treatment when the HALO was not available, and has had subsequent treatment with the HALO that has been used in the resolution of their cases. Follow up from Mark Robbins. You mentioned other services. Help me better understand what this means. There's, uh, uh, this is Bill. And Eric, uh, I want you to get in on this too. The, the doctors who refer to the affiliated doctors have need for other types of products and services that we don't have right now. And, and having access to these doctors, we feel there's an opportunity for additional services to this with other uh, joint venture people. Eric, maybe you can add to this or whatever. Yeah, hey Mark, basically these the, you know the the cases that that the affiliates um, see uh, some of the cases require other types of uh, services or uh, products that we could easily overlay on top of the existing network that we have. So um, that's about all I can say on that part of it right now without getting uh, too specific, but. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting, actually. From Harris Goldman, uh, what is happening in San Antonio that you see it as the clone of the future for SPIN? Tim, why don't you take that? Uh, uh, again, uh, I just want to be clear. San Antonio was a virgin market. Uh, there was not uh, any doctors that were closely involved with spine pain management who had been in the market working in personal injury for years and therefore had well-established relationships with attorneys. Uh, we went in with nothing. We knew no one. We had no existing relationships with attorneys. What we had and what we have is a better mousetrap. We offer transparency and technology to a segment of the market that needs it. There's a lot of skepticism. There's a lot of doubt that uh, unfortunately often accompanies people who are the victims of accidents. Therefore, what we have to offer them, it's been proven. Uh, 
that this is what people are looking for. This is the future. And the future is now. And with, with no built-in marketplace to drive to the affiliate, the numbers are growing very quickly. And they're solid numbers from a lot of different firms. And the feedback that they get, Harris, is very interesting. A patient involved in an accident, getting a procedure, any type of medical procedure at a clinic, when they find out that that treatment uh, is going to be uh, videoed, that there's going to be a DVD of their case, they realize that they're getting best of the best care. People know that. People know that if you are not providing good care, or uh, conversely, that a patient didn't need treatment, uh, they're certainly not going to go to a place where it's found. Uh, it's an indication of the quality of care that we provide. It's also a huge competitive advantage. Nobody else has the technology. It's exclusive. So if you're an attorney and you want the best of the best for your clients, they have to go there. Other markets in Florida, Houston, the Valley, places that we've opened affiliates, to prove to our shareholders the value of our business and the potential growth, it, it's not as clear because people were working there prior to working with spine pain management. So you can see why we consider a pilot city to be one that utilizes our strengths with the technology in a new market. And on its own with that, it's been able to generate really great business in a short period of time. I just, I just want to add to that. This is um, uh, Eric Rodeke. It, it, you know, one of the one of the CLEs that we did, um, I believe it was it was just this one in uh, in Houston. There was another uh, physician there that that had spoke as well on electronic um, health records, and uh, I'm not going to mention their their name, but it was it, it, they they had run a, uh, a couple of uh, ER depa uh, departments at at uh, some of the major hospitals, and it was interesting to see the comments from from the the the, the, the attendees that were there coming coming from his part of the presentation on electronic health records because the big complaint is that the electronic health records don't really tell the whole story about what's going on in that patient's case or what happened with that with that medical encounter. This is why you're seeing the, the Journal of American Medical Association put these kinds of um, articles out there on the importance of transparency, not only in the procedure, but also in, in the actual informed consent process, rather than just having it handwritten. So I think that um, the, the quad video halo and its, its transparency and that kind of higher standard of medical records is something that the demographic markets that we're in are appreciating. And we're, we're all experiencing the uh, effects of that. From Harry Jean, there's a major disconnect, apparently, with your stock price and what you've told us about today. Dr. Donovan, are you planning on buying any more stock? Well, you know, if you go back to uh, slide five, and you go back to 2012, July 2012. The according to the slide, the stock I guess was around a buck twenty. Now, a year later, um, our assets to liabilities ratio has doubled. Our equity, shareholder equity have doubled, but the stock is, what, 25 cents or whatever. Uh, I don't understand how the market works, but I think at some point people are going to appreciate what we're doing. And with an opportunity at the appropriate time, I've always been buying stock. I mean, I'd rather invest in something that I'm involved with than something that I, that some whale in uh, London would get you in. So I, uh, do I anticipate buying stock in the future? Sure I am. Why not? I mean, I'm seeing what's happening. 
I deal with this 24 hours a day, every day, and I've surrounded myself with some really capable uh, management people and some unique uh, technology. So, yes, I anticipate I'll be buying stock in the future. Hey, another question from Mark Robbins. Are we uh, selling quads or just leasing them to our own affiliates? To our affiliates, we're leasing them. Okay. And I'll tell you why, Mark. If you have an affiliate that goes south and you want to make adjustments, that affiliate stays with us. So the halo. We, Halo stays with us. Halo. I mean, the, the halo stays with us. I'm sorry. So, yeah, we, we want to control with the affiliates. We want to control uh, the halo. You mentioned other kinds of services for your affiliates. What are you contemplating from Harris Goldman? I think, again, we can't get specific about the discussions of joint ventures, but one would indicate that it will be technology related. It has applications within the personal injury segment of the marketplace and um, things that our patients currently need. Okay. Harris Jenkins asks, are you planning on opening any new centers right away and is that necessary to increase your revenues? Yes, we anticipate opening additional centers. And the second part of that was, is that necessary to increase revenues? No, I'll jump in. This is Tim. Uh, we don't have to open 10. An indication of our future revenue growth is not predicated on the number of centers we open. We have learned that it is better for us to be in the top market and to add more clinic dates per month and drive a higher volume of patients through those clinics than to spread ourselves into markets that maybe can't support the level of growth that we're at. So as we've indicated, there will be additional growth uh, here in Texas. I think there's also going to be two additional states that will be opening, and I think our shareholders will be really pleased with the opportunities that are at hand. Another question from Harris Goldman. San Antonio, uh, what competition did you have in San Antonio before you introduced the HALO system? I'm sorry, Art, I, I didn't hear that question. What, uh, San Antonio, before you, in, what competition did you have in San Antonio before you introduced the HALO system? Okay. Again, to be clear about San Antonio, I believe it's the sixth or seventh largest market in the United States. It's uh, in many ways uh, a small town market in its mentality. There's two or three providers that were, that were handling the majority of all the work there. We met them because, again, we were trying to seek out who we wanted as our affiliate, who would be the best match with technology, bringing transparency to the market. And I can tell you it's a competitive market, but we've done really well in a short period of time. And again, why we have, I think I've gone over and over why we've been able to do that. It's the technology, it's the CLE marketing programs that we've put in place. Paul Verso, what were the mistakes you made in the past that caused you to be so wrong in estimating your numbers? And why should investors believe the current optimism when you were so wrong in the past? If you determine what your average, oh, I'm sorry, that goes on to the next question. That's your question. Somebody want to take that? Let me, uh, let me discuss that. About a year and a half ago, uh, the company made or gave some guidance. Well, that was a mistake in the sense you can't, our biggest problem is we can't we can't gauge the settlement of a case. That's number one. The time. Number two, there were the the due diligence on 
uh, risk management was not strong. So there was probably cases and affiliates that should never have been gotten involved. So we've learned a lesson and all we're saying now, we've settled a thousand cases. We know what the average payment of that is. And we know that as of today, we have 2,200 cases that are not settled. We know the failure rate, that is a case that settles and we don't get paid. So we've learned a lot in the last two years. Uh, and we're, we're building on those errors that we made to proceed in a positive way. Uh, we were focused very heavy in certain areas that we should have probably been diversified more, but we've learned from that. So this is why in uh, uh, fourth quarter 2012, we had to redirect and steer the ship in the right direction. And I think we're heading there. And we've got two more questions. What, uh, from another one from Harris Goldman. What are you doing differently to increase your collection rate? Tim, I think you can address that. Internally, I think we've discussed in the past that we, that we have developed technology uh, or we're utilizing technology not only at the affiliate level to record procedures, but we're using technology within the house to track communication and uh, to lead to a, a faster resolution on settlement. Uh, and again, without getting too specific, because this seems to come back uh, at the company uh, from other avenues, I will say it's the constant uh, communication that we have on our cases. It's the organization of the information. And it is, again, what we can bring to a case to help all parties involved get things resolved. That is resulting uh, in the numbers that we're seeing. Uh, the indication is, do we believe that we're doing better? Yes, as we've just said, we're not even halfway through the third quarter, and things are dramatically increasing. The last question, you almost half answered just then, I believe. Have you determined what your average time for collection on cases, and how does this year compare to last year? Every case is different, and I think, again, when you, when you try to pigeonhole a specific type of procedure, where it happened, when it happened, where it was treated, uh, who it got referred to us from as a medical provider, uh, what, the, uh, what the rules in the jurisdiction are, it makes it very difficult. I think the takeaway should be this, a thousand cases settled. 2,200 more that are to be settled. Less than 1.7% of all cases have resulted in zero collection, and the average collection is over $6,400 per case. I think you can view and take those numbers, and I think you've got a lot to be positive about moving forward. I believe that was our uh, last question. I want to thank everybody. Uh, for being part of this uh, conference call. I thank you uh, for spending time with us, and in particular those who asked the questions. Uh, if you need to uh, reach us, uh, our contact information is here. And I think uh, the rest of this year and next year are going to be very exciting. And I hope that uh, we will see you all healthy and happy at the next conference call. But thank you very much and have a great day.